Some women, dare I say most women, want to find a man that makes them feel beautiful and amazing because they think that by someone else thinking it or pretending to think it, it would make it so, but that's a disaster. I think for ultimate happiness, you should find a man who makes you feel fat and ugly. <laughs> sort of. Bear with me. Okay, just bear with me. Just hold on. Don't. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for uh, trying to join this conversation. And if you're returning, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I really love you. I really do. Thank you. Because coming to hang out with me more than once is something special. Okay, so this is a weird concept that I've come up with. Uh, it's certainly in opposition to what most people think or how society runs. And the way most people think is how does he, women say, well, how does he make you feel? Well, how do you feel? How does he make you feel? How do you feel when you're with him? <laughs> and the people that advocate for that, it is typically women, but often men are typically the same people that when a new romance fizzles, they'll say to you uh, how amazing you are and that he's just stupid and that he's missing out and you go girl and girl power and you're way better than him and you're way better without him and all this rhetoric. But this is entirely wrong in my humble opinion. You should be looking for recognition, okay? So honest recognition of who you honestly are after you've deliberately cultivated the kind of qualities you that would take to make you top tier. So you must, as a woman, you must spend time creating a human who lives in your body. So like you, who is spectacular. And once you do that, you have created a solid filtration system. So I see a lot of people jump from relationship to relationship, looking for someone to make them feel, <laughs> feel a certain way. Nope. Wrong. Uh, a bad move. Time not well spent. People, I think currently, are addicted to new, to the search, to the thrill of conquering, the short, um, the short lived lust and f the fleeting fulfillment that a new connection brings. Okay. But that behavior doesn't foster self-improvement, let alone a healthy relationship. Okay. So I'm going to take you back to a story that I have from a long time ago. <sighs> Cause you all know I'm old, right? So this was a long time ago. I knew a woman that I worked with. So we were in our twenties. Let's say she was 24 to 26 years old and she dated a lot of men, but no man could ever make her happy. They always fell short. She always wanted more. So I, I, I don't take for granted that human connection is a tricky thing. It's not just that a nice guy plus a nice girl equals a happy relationship, okay? But the relationships that she was seeking were primarily about pleasing her. Okay, so that's not a relationship. It was about her. So I said to her one day, Jackie, let's say her name is Jackie, you're never going to find a guy with more than two hands. And... I'd like this trademark because I think it's really good. So what I meant by that is I said, you're looking for a guy who, no, you're looking for an auditorium. Woo! Woo! No matter what she did, she wanted cheers, cheers, cheers. But no matter the man, they can only give you one clap, one. So no man on the planet can feed the type of ego that this woman had that needed the stroking, right? So in my opinion, again, this is an opinion piece. And I, I talk about this a lot, which is about self-responsibility. Until you have the self-esteem needed to support yourself, really, you'll never be happy with any man. And the ones you choose typically will be shit because your filtration system is so bad. Okay, so the problem, the way I see it, is that most people, no, there are waves of people like this. More and more people are looking for an auditorium of attention rather than the joy of one excellent partner. So remember the old Groucho Marx quote that was, I'd never, I'd never be a member of any club who would have me as a member. 
Okay, so I use that quote a lot. I really like it. And I think it has to do with if you have no love or little love or you feel poorly about yourself, you're never ever going to believe that you can actually be loved by anyone who's worth anything. So with that, two things happen. You either choose poorly, right? So you choose a low quality man who perpetuates your beliefs about yourself or you find a really great man and then you sabotage the relationship to prove that you're right. So this goes back to the pillar, uh, the six pillars of self-esteem. Like whatever you think you are, you will produce in your life so you can be right because people fucking hate being wrong. So more and more, I think, more and more people are becoming like this. I think it's empty and it's staying empty. Empty of love, of genuine self-esteem, real abundance, honest happiness, clear skill sets. And the stats are pretty clear that happiness levels are going down, even though we live in this culture where it's like, do whatever makes you happy, that kind of narcissistic mentality, but it's not working. And I think less and less people are looking for or lusting for the, for the actual knowledge that it takes to become really happy. Okay. 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 So I think people now are also, they're empty, but they're also spoiled. So spoiled of what they could be. So in order to spoil, think about this, you have to have started out as something good or pure or nourishing or sweet, and then you have turned bad. So I think we live in a society of empty (laughs) and injured people, but let's talk about women. So how has the injury occurred? Why are people, women, people, women, I don't care, empty and injured? Again, this is an opinion piece. So number one, I think it's through media. If you think about commercials, Uh, movies, billboards, magazines that you see in the checkout line while you're buying your lean cuisine, you're sold a lie of what happiness is. It's pettiness, it's beauty, and that's fine, but it's skin deep and shallow. There's vapid arguments, and again, what I call global compassion, self-acceptance, no matter what kind of person you are. That's what you're sold. Number two, I think it's through the education system that so many people are fed is the way to success. Success. People are taught a bunch of lies in school. So here, Here, let me save you $100,000. Here, you're a victim. The patriarchy is bad. You must compete with men and win. Win! 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 You have to win against men. You have to win. It's a contest and you must win. So since I just saved you $100,000... Uh, if you feel inclined to make a donation or become a patron, you can do so in the description below. Or you can like, share, subscribe. You know the spiel. Anyway. Number three, I think it's through, and maybe you think this. I don't know. I'm interested to hear what you think. Through fatherless homes. Injured women raising children? What could go wrong? I don't know. And four, sometimes, honestly, I think more and more often, um, even intact homes, a mother and a father working tirelessly tirelessly together day and night to create spoiled children, which will become spoiled adults. So I know a guy in the community. He gives his time. He donates his money. He has a wife and he has three children, two daughters who are 28 to 32, both married. And they still call him and his wife for financial support. Like, Honest to God, this happens. Um, Dad, our car broke down and we need a car. So they buy him a new car. But the husband and the wife are calling, relying on them. And they're spoiling their children. Their son is about 27 years old. And he he can't find a, he can't find a profession that he really likes. So they pay for him to go to school to school. They pay for his moves. They pay for his apartment in San Francisco. That's not doing anything. So what that kind of parenting, I think, is injurious to people. You know, many of you know, I'm in fine dining and I have a lot of regulars and a lot of them are the same way. They, they have children my age. Yikes, my age. I'm not young that are still calling them. They buy houses for and whatever. So anyway, calling all ladies. If ladies, if you are fed up with the modernity's mantra, men are bad, patriarchy is bad, and they should be destroyed. Women can and should do the same thing as men do, that you can have it all, that having children in your 40s is really healthy and pretty fucking awesome. And if your man isn't a feminist, that they're horrible. If you're that, if you're there, or if you're a woman who doesn't feel at your core that you are where you want to be or who you want to be or that all the great men are gone, they're not, then I have a recommendation for you. 
Well, f first I would say watch, I have a video and I'll post it, um, deathbed meditations. And you can come to your own conclusion on what's honestly uh, true. But as a shortcut, if you don't want to listen, I'm here to tell you potentially a path against the current grain of our society's teaching. And I think it needs to be said and no one's going to like it. Fine. Fuck it. I'll say it. Okay. So number one, it is okay. No, it is good. No, it is important and vital to be positively feminine. And there are many ways to be it, but be a version of it. Don't shy away and demonize your femininity. Competing with men is not feminine. Whining about systems and screaming in the streets over points you can't really even articulate hmm, is not helping anyone. It's not helping you. Uh, belittling men for their masculinity while at the same time trying to be masculine yourself. Uh, not good. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Learning to cook well for yourself and your man and your family and your friends is probably a more fulfilling thing to learn and practice for the betterment of your life and the lives around you than any degree that you could get to sell some shit product that you don't care about or sit in a cubicle and do math for a company that you don't really care about or schmooze some exec who's just doing a job to take care of a positively feminine woman at home that he cares far more about than you and how you could do or how good of a job you're doing. I touch on this in my Princess Queen video. There's a lot of queens. No, there's a lot of women out there who try to go into kingdoms that aren't theirs and then complaining that they're not the queen of that domain of that kingdom. Number three, beauty. Beauty does matter. And I'm not talking supermodel beauty. Uh, most of us aren't born supermodels. Okay. And that's fine. That's okay. Most men are not born models either, but taking care of what you have is the name of the game. Honestly. And number four, intelligence matters. And I'm not talking stem cell research here. Um, but I'm talking more than superficial. I'm talking about thinking deeply, exploring topics that you have a natural inclination to explore and getting to know those things. I suppose I'm tying intelligence in with being interesting. If you're, if you can look in the mirror and say that you're interesting to yourself, I'm sure that you'll be impressive and interesting to somebody else. Number five, self-sufficiency is part of being a woman. So it's, it's worth the struggle to learn how to do it. Like I said before about the the awesome guy that I know that still supports his children. You should not expect, you should not expect to receive any help from parents or government. That's not part of being a woman. And number six, your, rela your relationships are the most important things you have in this world. And women are typically better at uh, creating social environments. So I would say using your positive femininity to create those relationships that means something. And number one, I would say it's a husband a man, a partner. Yes, a man. Children, family, friends, community. Build those things. So, okay, let's say that you do all these things. You cultivate a positive feminine nature. You stop trying to be a man. You stop competing with men. You learn how to be feminine. You learn how to cook real food, real good. You create a community of solid people and you know how to rely on yourself. Once that, okay, now here's the beauty. If you spend some time purposefully cultivating those things, you will gain a genuine dose of self-esteem. You'll have high worth, high self-esteem, high value. Okay. And that is what you need in order to have the filtration system. You need to find a great partner. So I, and I always talk about this. I talk about filtration systems. Some people talk about grandiose laws being needed to be changed. I think that we need to change individuals so individuals can partner up. You're not partnering up with the law system. You're not partnering up with men in general. You're partnering up with one fucking guy. So how do you find? So once you have all those things, you'll now have something really to offer. And you won't be attracted to a man who you feel, who makes you feel valuable. You'll be attracted to a man who recognizes your value. And then, and then you won't need an auditor, an auditorium of cheers. You won't need the exciting rush of new love. Instead, you'll need a partner, the right partner, and he'll need you. And when you find, okay, so here, here is the crux of everything. When you find that man, that amazing masculine man, you'll know what it feels like to feel fat and ugly. Okay. So I'm no supermodel. Some of you think I'm atrocious and some of you don't. Doesn't matter. I'm probably not a two, right? 
and I'm not thin, but I'm not fat, but I imagine. All right, so this is, this might not get me a lot of love, but I imagine that a fat, ugly woman, once she gets a man, she'll do whatever it takes to please him. And this is what I'm talking about. I think I want you to look at your man when you finally find him through your filtration system and think daily, how do I keep him? So here's an example. And maybe some of you men can, can relate to this. I had, uh, I woke up one morning, uh, a couple months ago and I was like, Oh my God, I want my friend rocket to come over for dinner and another man that I love very much. Right. I wanted them to feel love. So as soon as I woke up, I started looking at recipes. So I, I called them up and said, would you come over for dinner tonight? Bring a bottle of wine. So I made that night, can I just tell you what I made? I made um, crepes for the first time, uh, stuffed with ham and homemade Mornay sauce. And I made beef Wellington. So I, I cut, you know, the duck cells, I, I, I cut duck cell style mushrooms, mushroom duck cell. Oh my God. Which took like 45 minutes. Right. And I did the pastry and I wrapped everything and I made that and I made a homemade, uh, whiskey, uh, creme anglaise sauce to go with berries. So I served a three course meal and they said, why are you doing this? I said, because I fucking love you. And I want you to know that. Now, one of my friends, uh, one of the two guys there, had a girlfriend that he'd been with for like six months. And he said, she has never, <laughs> she's never cooked for me. Never cooked for me. I said, not like in all the times you've woken up together, he just never made you scrambled eggs or anything. And he said, no, this is amazing. And I couldn't believe it. And I think, you know, the more comments that I read, women, I'm not attacking you like I'm starting to get more feminists saying like, oh, you're just, you want rape. You're the fucking worst. You're against your own gender. No, like we have something to provide, but we're not doing it. If one of the most amazing men that I know has a girlfriend that can't even fucking cook them scrambled eggs. Really? <sighs> so, so anyway, showing love in that way, if you want to be happy, you know, once, once you find your guy, you should be thinking of ways to please him sexually all the time, every day. You should want to keep fit and attractive for him, for you. Yes, for sure. But your goal should be pleasing him. When you leave the house together, arm in arm, you should want to make him feel proud. You should be thinking of ways every day to show your appreciation for the thing. I'm sorry, to show your appreciation for the things that he does for you in your home and your life, because he does things for you every day. How do I know? Because high value women who really have something to offer partner up with high value men. When two honorable value, valuable people come in partnership, they're putting on constant daily auditions for the love and respect of the most valuable person in the room, which is their partner. Why? Because they're both doing it. So they're both maintaining this level of a value. They don't rest on laurels. Maybe I'm a romantic and that's fine. And you know, not every woman thinks like me. Uh, there are some true feminists who are just strictly backing up, um, women and fuck men and whatever, but I'm not like that. I think that if you really want a genuine, amazing partner, there is a way to get it. But first you have to cultivate yourself and then you will be looking for someone who recognizes those traits and you'll be able to recognize those traits in a partner. I tried to make this fast. Can you believe that? This is, I'm at 24 minutes right now on this. We'll see, we'll see once editing. I never know how it's going to go over. Okay. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. If you like my content, you can subscribe, you can share, you can like, you can hate me. <laughs> I say this sometimes you can, we're in a free country. That's it. Everyone be the best you can be. Learn how to cook something. Ladies, learn how to cook something and surprise your man tonight with a nice meal. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.